Welcome to this lecture on Factory Talk View Studio and more precisely on multiple ways and essentially two ways in which you can display a different status for a single item which is coming from your PLC. And this is something that can be used and has been used in one of my previous tutorials where I've changed different lights, so changing different colors, but I'm not only changing colors, but perhaps the entire appearance of an object. So we're going, going to essentially dive into the two methods, explain why one might be better than the other, and we're going to do the full programming on the PLC as well as the HMI side. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So as you can see, I'm in Factory Talk View Studio Machine Edition. This applies just as well to Site Edition, so you can re reapply these concepts in both. Uh, we're going to start off by creating a new display, so create new. And this is just going to be a blank canvas for us for now. We're going to turn our attention to the Studio 5000 application. And this is going to become clear right here. Essentially, I'm going to create a simple rung, which based on different conditions is going to store a different integer within a certain status bit. So this is going to be status, uh, status int. And the status int is going to change depending on the condition. Like I said, this could be used for a motor status. So think of your motor it could be in a running state. It could be in a faulted state. It could be in a waiting state. But similarly, it could be a motor. It could be a valve. I use this in many, many different situations in real life PLC programs. And I've showcased this in one of the lectures of my uh, of my class where essentially we're doing the street light application and it's changing from green to yellow to red. So here we're going to have different condition statuses. So condition zero is going to change to zero, one, two. And I'm going to create this tag as well. So new condition. This is going to be an array of booleans. So 32 PLC box condition zero, condition one. And then we're going to have condition two. And let's do all the way up to four. So let's copy this once again. So zero, one, two, three. We definitely need to change this as well. And we need to create this integer. So new double integer is fine. Create. And so at this point, we can save this logic. So very, very simplistic. There's nothing happening right now. We also need to reference from the main into that subroutine. So I'm going to copy this in underscore 11 different states compile that as well. Everything is good. Everything seems to be looking okay. And of course, this is if I toggle this, um, if I toggle this condition, then it goes to one, then I toggle this condition goes to two, goes to three. And it can change independently of, you know, of a certain sequence. So whatever, whatever makes it toggle, it can essentially implement itself. And we might create a counter down the road. Now let's our, turn our attention to this. And so the first way that we're going to do is essentially we're going to use an image. So let's go here and we can either pull it from here or we can pull it from the system symbol factory. So let's double click this and let's look at, for example, some kind of a motor. So let's say we have a motor and this is going to be, um, let's use this one, for example, we're going to paste that in. And so this is our motor. We can right click the motor and then we're going to use the animation property. So animation color. And from the color property, I can, you'll notice that there's going to be different parameters. So for zero, one, then I can put my mouse on the C and I can type in a value three. And then I can use the next one to be value four. And I'm just going to hit apply. I definitely, we haven't finalized everything, but we've established that three and four. We need the expression, which is going to be linked back to the tag on the PLC. So let's look at that. So tags. Solus PLC main. Let's uh, refresh the folder. It's a good thing to do whenever you're connecting to a online system. So online and here we're going to find that status status int right there. We're going to hit on OK. And that looks good. Hit apply close and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to press this. Well, first of all, I'm going to save this display and it's going to be called underscore 10 underscore 
I'm going to just go back and paste the same name. So different states, different states. Just so it's easy for anyone looking for the program to reference that back again. And I'm going to play this right here. So you'll notice that the motor is green. I'm going to try and position the PLC program on the side. Like so. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And essentially when this simple logic writes the different tags, we will notice that um, that the motor's state is going to change. So if I write this zero into it, you'll notice that the motor has turned red. And of course, if we put in a two, it's going to become yellow. Or I guess it's going to be green on two. And then on one, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be the color that we define. Let's see here why it's not turning. There you go. So yellow is three. I must have missed one of those parameters. So I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to just double check the color. So, okay, so at three, we have this yellow and then, yeah, so at four, we have this blue, but we're essentially writing zero, one, and I missed this two. This should be two, this should be a two, and this should be a three apply but essentially you get the idea we get to vary the color of your object based on a tag which is coming from plc that being said you definitely notice that the drawback of this is that the 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 object looks doesn't look really good it fills out the whole uh the whole area and you can use the fill as well and it just it doesn't look really nice so the better approach is to use different images. And that was the approach that I took with the streetlight application. So essentially, if you have multiple images that you've created in a different piece of software, then you can essentially layer the different images on top of one another. And based on that tag, you can select which one is going to appear. So let's demonstrate that functionality right now. So here, let's, let's see what kind of different um, images we have in the images folder so we have this yellow off we have a green off and we have the red off but let's um let's find something new let's go into the symbol factory and we're going to look at of course the buttons if you're using if you're using images for this specific application they do need to be similar but let's look at this is actually a pretty neat effect let's see if we can make it happen so we're going to have this f1 and let's look at the property that we're going to need to set on this. So animation, I'm going to go into visibility this time. So it's not going to be the color, but it's going to be visible when... So it's going to be an expression because it's no longer a tag. So it's going to be... Let's see here. So it's going to be tag and then we're going to find the same tag. But instead of just writing the tag, we're going to say that it's equals to zero. So when the tag is equal to zero, this is going to become visible. Now we go back to the symbol factory. We take the second image that we want to paste and we paste it on top of it. So here, let's just put them next to each other for better visibility. I'm going to write, actually, I'm going to go back in here and copy this just so that I don't need to rebrowse every single time. So I'm going to animation visibility and here it's going to be a one. And you can create as many as you'd like based on the based on the tag that you have. So I'm going to do three and then I'm going to do four since we've defined four different states. So let's see here. And then once again, visibility, copy everything. And then animation visibility. This is going to be a two. And last but not least, we have the animation visibility. And this is going to be a three. So, of course, you can realign them properly, but let's play this out. And so you'll notice only the last one has currently appeared on my HMI. So I'm going to go back into my logics and then I'm going to toggle these. So let's make this a little bit smaller. So if I have condition zero, which is met, you'll notice that this has written a zero. And of course, we're showing the first one. If we toggle a one, it's going to update the second one. And if we toggle a third, it's going to update to the third image. So very, very cool, exactly as we expected. So the usual thing that I like to do is I'd stack all of these images so I can just use the, the alignment pane here to go to the same image, right? And now you have multiple images of the same object layered on top of each other. So what this allows us to create, let's just scoot this over hit play, go back onto the PLC. And so 
here's condition zero essentially it becomes f1 then condition two becomes f2 so on and so forth but you can imagine how this application is extremely extremely valuable because not only are you just changing the image but you're also creating it in a way that allows you to essentially create specific effects so for example i've used this not only for uh rotation but you can have certain effects where the image changes and this is a really really neat trick that you cannot accomplish any other way just by layer you know creating images which are going to be outside made outside by somebody who does a graphical design and then layering it in a way where you leverage the visibility and essentially you replace it based on the tag of the PLC. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.